Assembly Hall. The date is February 14th, 1998, and we're setting up with the EWA, the European Wrestling Association's St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Currently, the ring is being set up, chairs are being set up, the hall is being decorated for the show. The wrestlers are going to come along a bit later, and then we have approximately well over 400, well over 400 hardcore rap fans waiting to see quite a show this evening. And the St. Valentine's Day Massacre is going to be the top show in 1998 for the UK hardcore market. I'm Ross Gordon, next time I speak to you, we'll put this room set up, we'll have the hardcore fans here, the wrestlers will be in the background to fly their trade, and we'll be taking you with the EWA. In the tournament tonight, three Brits, two German catchers, two Americans, and a wild man from Bombay, India. All one victory in the tournament tonight at St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Welcome to Walthamstow Assembly Hall. This is the February 14th, it's the European Wrestling Association's third show. The fans are waiting to get in, let's go out and see what they're thinking about the event. Follow me. Okay, if you follow me, first of all, we're going to ask a few of the fans just exactly what they think about tonight's card. Okay, we'll ask this gentleman here. What's your name, sir? Sam. This is Sam here. What do you think, what are your expectations for tonight's card? Well, I hope it's better than last year. Well, that's the thought that we're all thinking. We'll go over this way. A couple of younger members of the crowd. What are you on for tonight's evening, sirs? Sabu. Sabu? Yeah. What do you think about Sabu? Have you seen Sabu before? Well, I've seen one in magazines. Right, OK, so have you got a lot of hopes for tonight's yeah. card? Yeah. And who, who do you want to win in the tournament? Sabu. Sabu. Big Sabu fans. OK, let's take a further look, further down here. OK, we'll speak to this man here. What are your expectations for tonight's show? Well, Sabu is going to win the elimination. OK, where about you from? Well, I'm from Belgium. Belgium, so you've travelled quite a distance for tonight's yeah, show. Yeah, but uh, I would like to see Sabu in life. So. Sabu. Uh, who do you think will come victorious in the tournament tonight? Uh, well, maybe the dirt bike kid, because it's his country, so I hope for him that he is going to survive this elimination tournament. So we have a dirt bike kid supporter in the crowd. OK, most people are Sabu and Van Zandt Marks, or possibly Mikey Britt like fans. What do you think coming over here? What are your expectations for tonight's show? Sorry. It'll be all right. OK, it'll be all right. Let's go to the further back of the queue. As you can see, there's going to be well over 400 fans tonight at Walthamstow Assembly Hall. Well over 400 fans. We'll take a trip up the road if you just see how big this is. Quite a big event tonight in wrestling country in the UK. Hi, sir. What do you think of tonight's show and oh, what are your expectations? Fantastic. fantastic. Whereabouts have you travelled from? Uh, Luton. Travelled all the way from Luton. Not as far as some people. Okay, and take a further all, all the way up the queue here this time. And we'll talk to this man here on the ECW t shirt. What are your expectations for the show tonight? Um, I want to see Sabu bust open as many heads as possible. <laughs> well, who is? I think Sabu is your favourite for the tournament then. 
Uh, yeah, but he's got to be in here. I mean, he's top bollocks. I'll say that on the Oh, track. well, what do you think of Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Dam's chances tonight? Um, depends who he runs up against. I think if he gets against Sabu, then it's not going to happen. I mean, he's got a good chance, but it depends if someone can take Sabu out early enough. Right. OK, let's see what favourites other people have for tonight's show. OK, who's your favourite for the tournament tonight, Mr. Monday Night? Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Dam. Who are your favourites for tonight's tournament? Uh, Sabu. Sabu, what about you? Sabu! Sabu, big Sabu fans in tonight's crowd. Sabu! Sabu! Over the world we have tonight, fans all over the world, and we have someone from Japan! Someone from Japan! What are you guys going to tell us from tonight? Yeah, I came here to watch this, only this event. It's a very big event. I think event of the year. Event of the year in the UK, anyway. Who's your favourite for the tournament tonight? Yeah. Sabu. Sabu. Yeah. Well, no, no price for guessing who the crowd favourite is then. We're going tonight to put together the EWA St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Here we have the merchandise store with quite a lot of people putting a lot of effort. We've got all the posters, the t-shirts, the programs, you name it, it's on sale tonight here at St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Well, as you can see, the hall is filling up with more and more people. Yep, St. Valentine's Day Massacre looks as if it could just be a tad more successful than an ultra chaos. Let's go and find a few fans inside the building. And the ones that are sitting in the front row, let's look around. There's the gentleman here sitting in a ECW shirt. Hi, where are you from? Ashford. He's from Ashford in Kent. Right, so uh, I presume you must have bought your ticket pretty early then to uh, have got front row. Well, I'm Ross Gordon now in the commentary booth and it looks as if we're all set to go with St. Valentine's Day Massacre. The lights have been dimmed and the fans are sitting in anticipation of this great event and what a great event it really is going to be this evening. I can tell you the official attendance tonight, it is 535 paid fans. It's 535, so plus you had all the security on and everything and the cameramen and the photographers, you're probably talking about well over 560 people in the building this evening and here's the ring announcer making his way down to get the proceedings right underway the fans of course showing their appreciation and the lights come up and I'll shut up now Good evening ladies and gentlemen Welcome Good evening to the ring Elimination Tournament is for a bell that's been brought over by Ted Tanabe here from the Mishinoku Pro Promotion in Japan, the British Junior Heavyweight title, which was part of the J-Crown. I'm going to shut up now and let the ring announcer do his job.
just coming up here was in the ring just a moment ago of course 
The bracketing goes as follows, though. Rob Van Dam taking on Michael Kovacs. Then we have Alf Herman taking on the most homicidal, suicidal, genocidal athlete in the sport of professional wrestling, that is Sabu. Then we have a couple of Brits in the form of the Dirt Bike Kid battling Britain's own Phil Powers. And then Mikey Whipwreck, the former Triple Crown winner in ECW, taking on Jason Cross of the UK. Also joining me in the commentary booth now is um, Kenny McBride. Kenny, how are you doing? I'm just great, Ross. This crowd's pumped. I'm pumped. This whole night is going to be a great, great night of professional wrestling and hopefully a showcase for some of the greatest athletes in the world today. Well, I'm not quite sure of the order of the matches, Kenny, but uh, do you recognize this music? Do you know who's who's out first? I'm not quite sure who this is either, Ross. It's a bit of a guessing game for us. But oh, it's one of the Germans, or rather he's an Austrian, but he's from the CWA in Germany. It's Michael Kovacs. He's also currently the CWA Junior Heavyweight Champion. And although he's not defending that title tonight, he'll be defending that title's honor. Of course, he's going up against Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Dam. And we're now going to take some pre-recorded comments from the WWF superstar. This tournament contains one newcomer, one special newcomer, one Mr. Monday Night Rob Van Dam newcomer. Can I say any more? I don't know, it sounds like you ran out of shit to say already. What do you want to say, Rob Van Dam? That's all you got? Right. What do you want to say? This is a promo, I'm in London, England. This is my first time here. Mr. Monday Night's debut in London, England, which of course means that for England, this is the first time that you've had any true talent. So, congratulations to you for finally getting some action here. Let's see how it goes well with that nine-foot ring. You see that? That ring's like taller than you. You ever been in that ring? Well, I bet yeah. you gotta get a new stuff, don't you? Yeah, okay. Rob Van Dam's gonna kick ass in England just like he does everywhere else. One question, Rob. Oh, you do have a question. You have a question. Well, let's have it. In German, you can meet Sabu. And then what does that do for the two WWF infiltrators and ECW? Could there be a bit of friction there with the most homicidal, suicidal, genocidal man that is, Sabu? Well, okay, that's a fair question. Uh, I've wrestled Sabu only about 10 million, trillion, zillion, billion times. As a matter of fact, I know the man better than I know anybody else in this business. And uh, if I do happen to meet him here tonight in London, England, then uh, what you're going to get out of it, of course, is an outstanding match. It's beyond your belief and beyond any expectations. What I'm going to get out of it is a title. Although I'm not too thrilled about a junior heavyweight title, to tell you the truth, let me ask you something. Seeing as how this arm is about like as big as your head, do you think I look, you think I look like a junior? I mean, I don't know anything about kilos and however the hell you guys weigh over here. We do pounds in America. I know pounds is money here, but pounds is weight there. So you kind of got me confused there. But you know what? I don't want to learn. I don't want to master. I don't plan on being here long enough to use any kind of shit that I do learn about your system, but I will tell you this, Rob Van Dam's not planning on losing any matches tonight. Well, Mr. Monday night, when he's in England, See when he's in England, every night, Monday night. The yeah, charming man Rob Van Dam is, Ross. He certainly is, and I had the pleasure of speaking to him first hand. Such a modest person. But then again, when you've got that much ability, do you really have to be modest? Well, Mohammed here, somebody we've not seen with Rob Van Dam before, but apparently he's some kind of martial arts instructor for these guys. Yes, and everyone knows about Rob Van Dam's martial arts experience. He is quite an athlete. We don't know too much about Michael Kovacs, though, Ross. He, we know he's a champion in CWA, but we don't know much about his abilities. We don't know what kind of style he likes to employ. And I'm not sure if Rob Van Dam will have, the, will have done much of a scouting report on him here. Well, I was speaking to Rob, actually, off the record earlier, and he was telling me he doesn't know much about Michael Kovacs at all. He said he's heard he's got quite a good reputation in Europe, but he said he really didn't care and he was confident he'd beat him anyway. So... Here we see the two men now squaring up to each other. And I suppose in just a few minutes' time, we'll see if Rob Van Dam's prediction was right or if Michael Kovac can upset Mr. Monday Night and take the victory. There we see Kovacs with an arm lock. Rob Van Dam reverses into a waist lock. Kovacs with a waist lock now. 
Some good wrestling here in the opening few seconds. Well, I think that's one thing about the Europeans and the British wrestlers is that they are all good, solid wrestlers. That's one thing that in America, oh, what a stamp to the face there. Oh, yes, that was a vicious move. That's and that sent Mr. Monday Night reeling. He's going outside. He's taking oh, the a cameraman's taking a shot there. Yeah, Mr. Mo Mr. Monday Night needs to be careful there, I think. I think he's taking a timeout out here on the well, apron. Mr. Monday Night trying to make it a bit more wild in the style of ECW. Yeah, he's throwing a couple of chairs into that ring. I don't know what he thinks he's doing, though, because Michael Kovacs has already picked one of them up. There, Kovacs now throwing the other one out. I think he wants this to be a wrestling match. I'm not sure if Mr. Monday Night is ready for this, because as you said earlier, these Europeans are unbelievable technical wrestlers. They certainly are. That's one thing they practice here in Europe and in Britain. They make sure you know your technical ability before you know your aerial or brawling ability. And they walk up and Michael Kovacs has got Rob Van Dam in an art bar there. Van Dam with a kip up out of it, into an arm bar of his own. Here Kovacs looking for a reversal. He rolls through, rolls back with a handspring into an arm bar of his own again. And that's going to hurt Van Dam there. Van Dam though puts Kovacs off the ropes. Kovacs comes and ow! That's going to hurt you. I don't think Van Damme was quite expecting that. He went to leapfrog over Kovacs, but Kovacs just stopped and put his knee out for Van Damme to land on. And hit him in the ballroom. I ain't used to this fucking ring that's six foot off the ground. It's too much. Next time you get up to it's too high. It's fucking too high. You can't do nothing about it now, right? Too late now. Son of a bitch. Next time. <laughs> Well, Van Damme unhappy about the height of this ring, but then as they always say, only a bad workman blames his tools. Well, Van Damme quite po popular with this British crowd. Yeah, it's strange to see that, Ross, because in the ECW arena, in ECW, he is one of the most hated men in the building. But here tonight, I think people are just glad to see him. So it looks as if we're going to get some wrestling action once again. Hey, he's not bad, huh? Oh, and even Mr. Monday Night realizes There's Kovacs' ability. Which is it's not often that we see Rob Van Dam give credit to his opponent. So are we going to see some wrestling here, or are they just going to stall? Van Damme seems to want to get into arguments with every member of that crowd individually. Hey, fuck you! Well, Van Damme gives it straight to a fan who just chanted boring there. And maybe we are going to see some wrestling. And they walk up. No, they don't. Van Damme gets a martial arts hit to the stomach there and sends Michael Kovacs into the corner. He's working over him with kicks and forearms and punches. This is going to weaken Michael Kovacs quite a bit. Kovacs is looking hurt down in the corner there. Referee trying to step in to get a break there, but uh, Mr. Monday Night just not letting up. Mr. Monday Night just not listening there to the referee. He's trying to stop this onslaught in the corner there. And Van Damme sends Kovac into the corner. It's a somersault into a monkey flip, which is down Michael Kovacs. And my God, Ross, that was an incredible flip. It out. was a great Michael series, Kovacs. but Michael Kovacs is up and he gets it with a schoolboy roll up. We have one, we have two, and it only goes to that two count there. And Michael Kovacs is, but comes back with a drop kick and another drop kick. Well, What's Kovacs, Kovacs doing? He keeps up. Is that Frank? No, what's happening? Is that Frank? It's a Frankensteiner to the floor, Ross. That was unbelievable. Michael Kovacs, after taking that beating in the corner from Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Dam, he gets up, hits him with a schoolboy roll up, gets a two count, gets right back to his feet, a couple of drop kicks, and then that amazing Frankensteiner out to and the Michael floor. And Michael Kovacs ascends to the ring apron. What's he going to hit here? 
and he hits a close line which catches Van Dam right on the throat off the apron. And Ross, there's no mats out on this floor, no pretty blue mats to cushion the falls here in the EWA. That's just hard wooden floorboards. And Van Dam really must be feeling that now. And Kovacs continues his beating on Van Dam with a couple of forearms to the head. Van Dam maybe should have checked up on a bit more on Kovacs before he went into this bout. But no, he heads, hits Kovacs' head straight into that guardrail and it's now Kovacs who's on the deck. Kovacs and Van Dam just seem to be doing a tour of the ringside area here. They've been battering each other all over the place. There, Van Dam going in with a couple of kicks. Picks Kovacs up. What's he going to do here? Oh, he's whipping him into the rail. Oh, my God, that's got to hurt the lower back area of Michael Kovacs. Kovacs is going to feel that, not just over the next few seconds, but certainly over the next few minutes and possibly hours. That is going to have to weaken Kovacs immensely now. And one must be wondering how much longer Kovacs will be going in this matchup. Kovacs definitely hurt there. That's got to take a lot out of your lower back. You said he might be feeling it for the next few hours. I think he could be feeling it for the next few days, Ross. A few forearms to the head there by Mr. And Monday Night Van Damme. Mr. Monday Night on the ring apron with a moonsault off the apron. A moonsault off the apron by Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Dam. That's something I don't think we've seen Mr. Monday Night do often, Ross, but boy was it effective. He didn't quite hey, catch it. that leaves their feet off the ground. Mr. Monday Night wondering what the referee expects him just to tip up from that after the heat. And I quote, he says the ring is eight foot off the ground. Well, it's not quite eight foot, but it certainly is higher than most ring aprons in America. As Mr. Monday Night pointed out there, it was hard for him to actually throw Michael Kovacs back in because the ring apron is so high. And oh, that's got to hurt. I think every man in the building knows how that one feels. Michael Kovacs now really, that's the second time in the match he's gone to the, how do I say, ballroom of Mr. Monday Night. Oh, a couple of punches to the stomach, sends Michael Kovacs crashing to the canvas. Mr. Monday Night on the top rope, we know he can do some amazing things off the top rope, Ross. What's it going to be here? A martial arts a kick off the top rope there, damage Kovacs. Surely Mr. Monday Night is going to go for the cover now. A single footed kick there, Ross. It's a Taekwondo type move. And there's the cover. One, two. And it's only a two only count. Only a two count there, Kenny. Only count a two count. Kovac uh, showing his resilience. Of course, Kovac not as used to the extreme style as Mr. Monday Night will be. But Kovac certainly showing he can cope with it. And watch this. Oh, a bit of a retaliation blow there to Kovac's lower areas. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and well. You know the rest, Ross. Oh my goodness, a kick there from Mr. Monday Night, springboarding off the top rope into Michael Kovacs. And there he showboats for the crowd a little bit. I think he wants people to realize quite how great he thinks he is. And the crowd there chanting Rob Van Dam as it echoes around Welcome to Assembly Hall. As we said earlier, Ross, I, I, it's odd to hear people chanting Rob Van Dam's name because he is so unpopular in ECW. Rob Van Dam sets Kovacs up with a suplex, but Kovacs blocks it. Goes for it again and blocks that second time. And Kovacs comes back with a suplex of his own. So do not count Michael Kovacs out now by any means. Michael's slow getting back to his feet here, but he's going up to the top rope with Van Damme on the mat. Van Damme lying prone on the mat. And he loses his balance. He gets a springboard splash, but Van Damme brings up his knees. I think Kovacs was unfortunate there losing his foot and he gave Van Damme just enough time to see what was going on around him. And here goes Van Damme to the top rope. What's he gonna do? So Kovacs got a sore back now and a sore ribs and a frog splash there. Reminiscent of the late Art Bar, Love Machine Art Bar, who perfected that frog splash down in the AAA promotions in Mexico. Rob Van Dam uses a frog splash of his own and here we are. That's gotta take the wind out of Michael Kovacs. What's he going for here now, Ross? He looked like he was setting Kovacs up in the corner for something. Takes, takes a couple of punches. I think we're going to see the Hollywood star press now, Kenny. That's it, the Hollywood star press, Ross. That's One, a fantastic two, move. three, and, and Van Damme through to the next round now. Kovacs put up a great fight, a great effort. But the WWF superstar, Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Damme, the infiltrator in ECW, has just infiltrated the EWA in dramatic style. And here we see the bracketing, Kenny. 
Yes, that's right, Ross Van Dam goes through from that match at the top of the bracket. And he will be facing either Ole Perman or possibly his partner, Sabu. Yes, of course, it would be interesting to see him face Sabu. He hasn't faced Sabu for well over a year now. But Van Dam must be very happy with that hard-fought effort. And that, believe me, that was a hard-fought effort there over the CWA's world junior heavyweight champion, Michael Kovac. coming on to our second contest in the tournament and I have been informed from the back that this is going to be Phil Powers versus the Dirt Bike Kid the Dirt Bike Kid of course the, the original European Junior Heavyweight Champion now Kenny can you tell us just a bit about Phil Powers well Phil Powers is a great young athlete Ross one of the top stars in Britain now after only a few years in the business he's a great great young athlete very fast paced very technically sound and a great brawler too when he needs to be. I think he's going to be one of the really big names in British wrestling over the next few years. Of course, some may argue already he's one of those big names on the British circuit anyway, but he'll hopefully be hoping that maybe tonight's showing in the tournament could lead to bigger things, maybe stateside. And I understand, Ross, that you've got a video of his opponent, yep, the Dirt Bike Kid. here's the video about the Dirt Bike Kid. The Dirt Bike Kid. Britain's own Dirt Bike Kid. Here he is against Carl Kramer in the instant which broke his back. A vicious sidestep and sending the kid right onto the concrete floor. But the Dirt Bike Kid is a survivor. He's a fighter and he's determined to make it in the wrestling business. And just a few weeks later, against doctor's orders, the Dirt Bike Kid stepped into the ring in the inaugural EWA, the European Wrestling Association's inaugural show at Walthamstow Assembly Hall on July 95 to face the most homicidal, suicidal, genocidal, maniac wrestler in the sport. The man who is called Sabu. The Dirt Bike Kid gave everything he could to Sabu and took it back just as bad. But unfortunately it was Sabu that prevailed in the bout with an Arabian moonsault gaining the 1-2-3. However, the Dirt Bike Kid would soon fight back on the British circuit and he soon found himself facing Doc Dean to crown the inaugural European Junior Heavyweight Champion. In the bout, he gave everything he could to Doc Dean and after a Frankensteiner off the top rope, the Dirt Bike Kid found himself crowned the new European Junior Heavyweight Champion. Tonight, he's hoping to regain that title he lost to Mikey Whipwreck. But only time will tell if he has the power to do so. So we're waiting on the entrance now of the Dirt Bike Kid. You've heard a little bit about him. Hopefully you'll be able to follow him. And what a smashing entrance there by the Dirt Bike Kid. Hello, lawyers. As the Dirt Bike Kid makes his way down to ringside, Phil Powers sits in the ring, anticipating quite a matchup ahead of him. Phil and Dirt Bike Kid have met on previous occasions. On one occasion, when Dirt Bike knocked Phil Powers out by ramming his head into a table, following a, a vicious run-in from the Dirt Bike Kid. But that was in the past. That was a good couple of years ago now, and both Powers and the Dirt Bike Kid are matured immensely. Before we go on with the bout. We're going to go to a few pre-recorded comments from Phil Powers earlier. What do you want to say, Phil? What do you reckon your chances are against the Dirt Bike Kid in tonight's tournament? Well, everybody thought I had a bad start in this business, but we're just going to wait and see what happens tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but well, all the critics have slammed Phil Powers in the past, but this is his life to prove them all wrong. Yeah, the, dirt, the Dirt Bike Kid, of course, is not alone from criticism himself, Kenny. No, he's had his critics in the past. So even his doctors have criticised him a great many times, as we saw in that video there. And this referee, this is Gary Howell. He's the, he's the lead Gary, referee. Gary Dowell. Excuse me, sorry. Gary Dowell. He's our head referee here in the EWA. And he'll be looking for a clean contest here from two men who I think like to brawl as much as they like and to wrestle. And Dirt Bike Kid pushes Phil Powers into the ropes. The referee gives him the count of five and there's a clean break there, Kenny. 
Yeah, it's good to see that sportsmanship from these two guys. They're of course, they haven't had a great pass. They have had a few run-ins with each other. Of course, one time in Dirt Bike Kid did a run-in to one of Phil Powers' matches and knocked Phil Powers unconscious by battering his head against a table. Yes, and Phil never really got revenge for that, so I think he may be looking for some kind of victory here just to show Dirt Bike Kid that you don't mess with Phil Powers. And Phil Powers comes crashing down there with a su suplex on the Dirt Bike Kid. A couple of slaps to the face and Phil Powers sends Dirt Bike Kid off the ropes. Goes for a clothesline, misses and Dirt Bike Kid comes back with a clothesline of his own and sends Phil Powers crashing to the canvas. That's right, I think Dirt Bike will be trying to get this match over with quickly. I think both men really will want the match over with quickly because they've got two more matches tonight. Dirt Bike Kid on the top rope and comes over with a splash. That's a great splash there. Gets a one, gets a two. Only a two count and Gary Dull is quick to stop the count when Phil Powers kicks out. And both men now back on their feet. Dirt Bike Irish whip off the ropes with Phil Powers. Comes in, another big clothesline. And that really jarred Phil's neck badly. I think that's going to hurt. Both men going for weaknesses in each other early out. There's a German suplex there. All impact, no bridge. That's right, Ross. I think, I think the Dirt Bike Kid really wants to hit Phil hard and hit him fast and get this match over with because he's got a lot of challenges. He's never really shown his true talents on an EWA show before. And I think that's what he's hoping to do tonight. And it looks like it may just be at Phil Power's expense at the moment. And Dirt Bike Kid there misses with a leg drop. And Phil is quick to capitalize. Scoop slam there by Phil Powers and he heads to the turnbuckles. He's on the second rope there. Goes for, a, goes for a splash, but misses and comes down hard on both knees. Well, I'm not sure that Ross there, he may have been going for a knee drop. Possibly, but and oh. here's the pit stop pile driver. Didn't quite get his neck there. Well, Rather got his neck there, didn't quite get his head on the canvas, but snapped his neck there. I was speaking to the dirt bike kid earlier, and he was telling me that he's been practicing this pile driver, and he's nicknamed it the pit stop pile driver. Oh, terrific clothesline there by Phil Powers, though, sending Dirt Bike Kid for six. And Phil heads the turnbuckle again. He goes up to the top rope. What moves he going for this time? He's setting himself up, and he comes over the drop it's a kick. a big drop kick right on Dirt Bike Kid's shoulder there, and he kips up. That's quite an athletic maneuver there by Phil Powers. And what's he doing again? He sets up Dirt Bike Kid. What's he doing? Surely he's going to cover him. No, he's taking an awful risk here by going to the top rope once again. Both men taking risks early on in this contest. And he's taking his time getting up there as well, Ross. He may just give Dirt Bike Kid time to recover. What's this? Go for shooting star press. He hasn't managed to get right over. He landed right in his leg. Did you see that, Kenny? Yes, that was horrible to see, Ross. That had to... It's the bridge and bad German suplex. One, two... Three, the Dirt Bike Kid qualifies for the next round of the tournament, Kenny. That's right, Ross, and that was an amazing victory, but I really don't think that it was the German suplex that finished Phil off there. Phil there going for either a shooting star press or a big senton off the top rope, and the Dirt Bike Kid moved out of the way. I'm really worried. I know Phil Powers reasonably well, and I'm really worried there for Phil Powers. His neck must be in total agony. There we see the Bracton Kenny. Of course, Van Damme already through. He's going to be facing the winner of Herman or Sabu. And Dirt Bike Kid now going through. He'll face either Mikey Whipwreck or Jason Cross. I really am worried about Phil Powers. I hope there is no serious injury to his neck. Referee Gary Dowell there checking out Phil Powers. As we see the crowd, Phil is moving just. Phil's on his feet. He seems to be getting up onto his feet. And getting helped up by the Ho dirt bike Hopefully kid well. it won't be a serious injury and just be bad bruising, but I think he's going to be feeling that for a few more days to come. I think that could, could we have a post-match argument here? No. Both athletes congratulate each other on a good match. And of course, Phil Powers must be a good show of science sportsmanship there. Phil Powers encouraging the dirt bike kid probably to go on and race Union Jack high. Collins there said by Phil Powers about his previous employers. Of course, Kenny and myself can't possibly comment on that. Do you want to say why, Kenny? Well, Ross, there is a press ban by that uh, Kent-based group, um, which Phil formerly frequented, but now I think he feels the EWA is going to make a better name for him on an international scale. 
a few select comments there by the dirt bike kid. Yeah, but going back to that. It's a hellish bump for anybody to take, Ross, right on the back of his neck there as we see the two belts up at stake tonight. Yep, that's the European Junior Heavyweight title belt and the British Junior Heavyweight title belt. Of course, the British Junior Heavyweight title was previously held by athletes such as Doc Dean, Stevie J, Jushin Liger, Ultimo Dragon, Dick Togo. The list is endless, but great athletes nonetheless. Here's Jason Cross. Another fine British athlete. Do you want to tell us just a bit about Jason Cross, Kenny? Well, Jason's been taking a lay long layoff this year. He's had some a bad injury to his knee, I believe. No, it's his back. His lower back, I understand. Lower that, back, yes. which he, he hit a topic a topic on heel. And uh, his opponent wasn't there. And he landed bad. That was out in Tennessee Mountain Wrestling. And uh, ever since, he's had a terrible back injury and he's been kept out. Speaking of knee injuries, though, I think this man just coming out has been hit with a terrible knee injury all year. Yes, Ross, this, this athlete is one of the toughest, most tenacious athletes in the world. This is former Triple Crown holder in ECW, the loser, Mikey Whipwreck. Of course, Mikey Whipwreck is the only, and I say that again, the only wrestler to have held the world television title one half of the world tag titles and the world heavyweight title at ECW. Other wrestlers have done the triple crown, but not when all the titles have been world titles. That's an important fact to remember, Kenny. Yes, indeed, Ross. And of course, Mikey's also a former holder of the European Wrestling Association European Junior Heavyweight title. So he's held just about every title he's ever contended for. It's important to know though, Kenny, that European Junior Heavyweight title isn't just an EWA belt. It is a multi-promotional, cross-promotional title. It isn't just an EWA title. That's right, Ross, as we saw there, Mikey doing the familiar bang-bang gesture of his former partner and former best friend, Cactus Jack. Yep, Mikey, as many people know, is in fact Cactus Jack's protege. Yeah, Mikey, Mikey really is uh, the ultimate product of the extreme environment. He's, he started off working as a building rings for ECW, then got in the ring, started to learn a few moves, and eventually got trained by some of his best friends in the promotion, and has quickly turned into Ross over the last few years, one of the best young wrestlers in the world. Certainly. We'll shut up for a second, Kenny, just as we listen to the ring announcements. Mikey quick to break the ring announcer. Here's a little video coming up about Mikey Whitbrick. Everybody knows that Mikey Whitbrick is a great, great wrestler, but the Dirt Bike Kid found out about it firsthand in August of 1996 when Mikey Whitbrick battled him at the Lulu Temple in Pennsylvania. In that match, the Dirt Bike Kid managed to hit many of his biggest moves, but it just didn't seem to be enough, as Mikey Whipwreck scored the 1-2-3 for the European Junior Heavyweight Belt. Mikey defended that belt throughout the United States, but then in his European debut against, again, the Dirt Bike Kid, Mikey and Dirt Bike gave it everything they had. But once again, Dirt Bike was unable to put Mikey away. This time the match going to a 15 minute time limit draw. This meant that they faced Sabu in the main event in what turned out to be a, an incredible three-way dance matchup. Dirt Bike Kid finally got that pinfall victory over Mikey Whipwreck although he was pinned later in the match by Sabu. Jason Cross, on the other hand, was on the undercard of Ultra Chaos, putting in a very strong showing against Sir Sidney Lee. Later in the night, 
Jason would team with Hanzo Nakajima from Mishinoku Pro Wrestling to defeat Eric Isaacson and Phil Powers. Both men are looking for a win tonight, as only a win tonight can move them up the ladder of success in the EWA. So as you're saying, Kenny, both men are really one to climb up the ladder of success here in the EWA. That's and of right. course, a big dream tournament tonight, going all the way even. We'd certainly see them jump up the ladder. Mikey has been tough pushed to make it up into the upper echelons of ECW since his reoccurring knee injury. And Jason Cross, well, grabbing those two titles from Jason Cross would simply elevate his career unfathomable amounts. That's right, Ross. Mikey, of course, suffering from that knee injury. Of course, he's had knee problems in the past. But this most recent injury, of course, suffered at the hands of Just Incredible just a few months ago. And he's really suffering walking on that knee. I saw him coming into the building earlier on. He needed a huge brace on his knee. I don't know if we can see it there, but Mikey's in a lot of pain out there. Jason, of course, as we said earlier on, has suffered a severe back injury that's kept him out of wrestling for most of last year. And so this, this match could really be a contest more of who's more injured rather than who is the better wrestler. That's exactly true, Kenny. But while Mikey Whitwreck's knee is very visible to the, to the crowd and to us, Jason Cross's back doesn't really seem to be giving him much problems at the moment. No, that's true, Ross. But uh, Mikey, of course, as we know, is one of the gutsiest, most toughest competitors we've ever seen in this sport of professional wrestling. He certainly is one of the most tenacious wrestlers on the planet. And I don't see that knee injury slowing him down one bit. Let's if call the action a bit now, Kenny. Mikey goes for the cover, one, two. A two count there by Mikey Whitbreak. And what's his another cover? Just gets a one count there. Jason Cross this time goes for the cover, one, two. Both men going for quick covers, one to get this match over. That's a build throw there, or as some people call it, a Mexican arm drag. And it sends Jason Cross out to the floor. And I don't think he wants to be there. Even with Mikey's knee injury, he's back to get a these great fans aerial. value for money here. He is a great aerial competitor, and there he hits a Topicon Hilo. A Topicon Hilo there as by was, Mikey Whitbreak off the apron. As I was saying there, Ross, Mikey always wants to give the fans value for money. And no matter how much his knee is hurting him, he's going to give it everything he's got in this match. As you saw just there with that terrific Topicon Hilo on Jason Cross. That's completely correct. Mikey Whitbreak could easily have backed out of this tournament and easily got about coming over to Britain for the European Wrestling Association St. Valentine's Day Massacre. But not only is he greedy and hungry for the success, but he wants to give all the fans their money's worth. A philosophy, I'm sure, taught to him by the legendary Cactus Jack. Yes, indeed so, Ross. I think most of these ECW wrestlers really want to give the fans what they can. And Mikey is no exception. Mikey sent off the ropes and, oh dear, that knee must be getting worse because Mikey, even the momentum won't carry Mikey across the ring. And Jason Cross stomps on that knee. Yes, Ross, this has really got to be troubling for Mikey and for the EWA officials. Do they stop the match? Do they say Mikey can't continue? Or do they let Mikey carry on, despite the fact that he may suffer a very serious, possibly even career-ending knee injury there. here tonight? That, that's completely correct there, as Jason Cross works on on Mikey Whitbreak. He's got a chin lock there, trying to sap the energy out of Mikey Whitbreak, restricting the breathing there. At the moment, it seems strange that he's going after Mikey's neck area when, a oh, crucifix. when he goes into crucifix there. A two count. As I was saying, it's strange that he should attack Mikey's knee. Oh, well, attack Mikey's neck when his knee's so vulnerable, but there he's right back on the knee with a, a leg, leg drop. drop. <laughs> yes, really, I mean, you have to say, though, what type of sportsmanship, though, is it to go after the knee? Phil Powers and Dirtbike Kid show great sportsmanship with green breaks. But Jason Cross really seems more interested in the victory than in his opponent's well-being. There, he continues to work almost sickeningly well, over as the they, knee of Mikey Whitbreak. As they say, Ross, all's fair in love and war, and in the Valentine's Day Massacre, we've got both. Yes, well, there's not many rules in professional wrestling. 
but Jason Cross is and here we go with a Liger ball one two two count there Mikey as I was up. saying there Jason Cross stretching the rules to their full extent and Mikey trying to work up some support from the crowd yeah the crowd now chanting Mikey's name but I don't know how much that's going to help him Ross Jason Cross goes for another Liger bomb and he's up on him Mikey Whitmer gets a reversal with a Hurricanrana one, two, about a two and a half count there. Mikey Whitbreak almost getting the victory there. Jason Cross just sneaking out the back door. I don't think he was quite expecting Mikey to come back there. Certainly not. Mikey really has, uh, has even a problem standing. But it doesn't stop Jason Cross working over that knee. Mikey groans in agony there. I really feel for Mikey now. Jason Cross doesn't seem in any hurry to put Mikey away. I think he knows how badly Mikey's hurt. And I think he knows. Mikey that reverses the whip. Jason Cross goes behind. Mikey goes behind again. Jason Cross one more time. Misses the elbow. And there's a Northern Light suplex. That's one of Jason's trademark moves, but only a two count there. That's how he got the victory at last year's Ultra Chaos, beating Over. Sir Sidney Lee. Yep, and uh, Mikey there again grasping his knee. I really don't know how much we can longer the uh, EWA officials can let this go on. Surely the referee, Ted Tanabe, has to make some kind of decision. I don't know if Mikey can reasonably defend himself here. Well, Jason Cross is going to the top rope. This could be a finishing maneuver for the Welshman. But Mikey seems to be moving and he's shaking that top rope. And Jason Cross, well, do I have to say what he's feeling there? Mikey Whitrick. I don't think he does. What's he but doing? Is Mikey's this what going I think for it the is? Whipper snapper. He's going, he's pulled the Whipper, whipper snapper. snapper. That's the bag. That's surely. One, two, three, and oh my god! Mikey Whitbread goes through there with the whipper snapper. He pulled that one out of the back door, and now we see Mikey Whitbread against Dirt Bike Kid. This is going to be yet again a match between those two rivals. At the moment, they've had one pinfall each and a draw in all their meetings. Maybe this one is going to be the decider. However, I really don't know if Mikey's going to be ready for that match. Mikey's knee has taken a severe, severe beating from Jason Cross there. Could we see another three-way dance? I mean, if Mikey just can't go on, does that mean that they'll show us we'll have Savu versus Van Damme or Alf Herman, or will they just put all the men into a three-way dance, whoever goes through? Or will Savu and Alf Herman go to, to a draw? Who knows? But Mikey, I'm sure, will be trying to come back. But will the EWA officials bless him? We'll just have to wait and see, Kenny. Yes, folks, anything can happen here in the EWA. And Mikey there, the agony clearly showing on his face. He's having trouble even getting up the steps to leave the building. And I, I just don't know what, how he can continue tonight, Ross. He can barely walk, let alone wrestle. music there Kenny yep Gary Dowell just making his way to the ring here for what can only be oh Sabu. Gary Dowell is falling over there did you see that yes I did Ross this match can only be Ulf Herman the German superstar versus the most suicidal homicidal genocidal death defying athlete on the face of the planet Sabu that's right and I can only presume since this isn't Sabu's music that this is Ulf Herman and oh my Old Herman has a torch in his hand. Oh, please. This is reminiscent of uh, Abdullah the Butcher. Yeah, it could well be. I don't know whether he's just bringing that torch out to blow fire or if he's going to set fire to somebody in the crowd there. He's... Oh, don't start that, Kenny. He's, that certainly very, very he's certainly very, very close to that cameraman with the fire there. Very unpopular with the crowd there at Ulf Herman. Ulf Herman giving the single-fingered salute to the London fans here. Four. It looks like he's going to do it. Oh, what a fireball there. What a fireball by Ulf Herman. Reminiscent there, Ross, of uh, Ricky Steamboat. the great Ricky Steamboat in the WWF. And also in WCW. Passes the torch out to one of our ring attendants here. 
and now it's the entrance that everyone has been waiting for of course early in the night when we spoke to people there was really only one man that people had come to see and it's this man right here Ross chance Sabu's name. I mean, what can I say, Kenny, about Sabu that just hasn't been said before? There's absolutely nothing. Everybody knows him, Ross. Everybody knows that face. Everybody knows that look. Everybody knows those scars. Indeed so, Ross. He's got his jaw taped up, of course, after that horrible, horrible incident in ECW a few weeks back when he did the triple jump moonsault onto a table. But unfortunately for him, the table was the wrong way up and his face went smashing into one of the legs of that chair, that table rather. He got up, he finished the match, and he's here tonight. He certainly is, and do you know how, how he fixed that injury, Kenny? He had terrible cuts in, in his mouth. He had lost a few teeth. Do you know how he sorted that injury out? Well, Ross, from what I hear, I don't know if it's true or not, but apparently he fixed the wound himself with super glue and masking tape. What kind of crazy man is this, Sabu? How can you go into a match facing someone that treats their own body like that? I mean, how do you prepare for a match like this? I don't know if there is any way to prepare. I remember Shane Douglas in an interview once for us describing wrestling Sabu, and he said the best way to describe it was to rev your car up to 70 miles an hour and drive it straight into a brick wall. Well, that's fine and well, Kenny, but what happens if you've got another car coming at you from the other side of the brick wall, driving at 120 miles an hour? Well, certainly the size Wolf Herman is, he may just be a bit bigger, a bit stronger, but I don't think he's faced anything like Sabu before. Certainly not. It's going to be a great, great matchup. Two great, great athletes, both of whom are desperate, desperate for a win tonight. That's correct. So they both stop each other and they lock up. And Alf Herman initially showing his strength advantage he has over Sabu. Sabu may be a bit crazier, but certainly Alf Herman is the stronger of the two athletes. Yeah, we know Alf Herman has that power advantage. Sabu probably a little bit quicker, a little bit lighter, a little bit more high flying than Alf. But Alf, if he can use that power, use that bulk on Sabu, then you know he's got the victory in the bag. A couple of drop kicks there to the shin. Sabu is relentless. And then Mill Furman out to the floor where he's taking a little breather. You'll just be hoping Sabu doesn't want to try one of his crazy dives out there onto him. Gary Dow very quick in the count there. Very quick. We saw Sabu there conferring with the manager for tonight, Muhammad. And he goes after he goes after Will Furman's legs. There's a leg lock here. Gargano asking almost. Wolf if he wants to submit there, but I don't think he'll submit to that. That almost looks as if it was a knee bar with a bit of an ankle lock on it. So that's really going to hurt if you can apply that move properly. Both men are back on their feet, squaring up to each other, and they go, are they going for a test of strength here? Alf seems to be wanting a test of strength, but Sabi goes straight into a color and elbow tie-up. Uh, Alf quickly goes behind. There's Wolf there with the hammer lock. Takes him down. Kenny, I'm not Sabu sure if you can see hammer lock. Yes, I, I don't know if we can call it a hammer lock. I don't know if the word is actually banned from our broadcast here. There is a there is an arm bar. Yeah, I'm sure we can say arm bar. There can be. I'm sure we can say arm bar. I don't think there's any press ban about saying arm bar. A couple of kicks to the ribs there by Sabu. Gary Dowell asking if Al Perriman wants to give up, but no sign of that just yet. Al Perriman. Oh, what's this? Very athletic from such a big man there. And a boot to the midsection. And Owen Hart style armbar reversal into the Irish whip there. And oh. a big clothesline by Ulf Herman. Takes Sabu down. What was that Ulf Herman just said? He said... Uh, I don't know, but I don't think it was too complimentary, Ross. I don't think it was. I think basically he said he didn't make any mistakes. It was Sabu that made the mistakes. And there's a snap suplex there. It's strange, Ross. Sabu, normally we see him, he wants to go all out very, very early in the match. He wants to hit his big move quickly and cleanly. Whereas here, he's tried to take Ulf Herman down to the mat. Perhaps he realizes that Ulf Herman 
is tough on his feet and if he can take him down to the mat he takes out some of that leverage advantage takes out some of that power advantage i think sabu is maybe learning here that there's no way on earth you can try and attack Alf herman and beat him at the strength game you really get to try and take him down and wear him down remember the longer the match goes the longer it's gonna or rather the harder it's gonna be for Alf herman to combat it the bigger you are the harder it is for you to keep up the pace with such a small man as Sabu. Small and quick and versatile. And there again we see Sabu doing that baseball slide type drop kick to the knee. And, and once again, Old Herman, Herman goes outside. out to the outside. There's Sabu with a baseball slide. Relentless once again with those baseball slides. And I think we're going to see a form of the triple jump. That's right. There's Sabu, hits a move to the outside. That's a form of triple jump there by Sabu. It's not the traditional triple jump moonsault or triple jump flip dive that we've often seen Sabu do before. More like a Lutez press to the outside. But it seems to have done the job. Wolf Herman seems very, very tired at this point. Of him reverses a whip and sends Sabu crashing into the guardrails. And of course, metal and human body just does not mix. It hurts, and it hurts a lot. Whoa! I don't think he'll quite caught that Topicon heel the way he wanted to, but it took Sabu down anyway. I don't and care, Sabu I am impressed. I am impressed that such a big man as Alf Herman, six foot seven he is, a man of such big stature, can hit a flip dive just like that. There we see him now trying to throw Sabu back into the ring. Again, this high ring apron. Seems to make those dives all that little bit more uh, more devastating, Ross. Certainly. And of course, maybe it seems a bit easier for Alf Herman having that size, but Sabu is the smaller of the two. He'll be noticing that height difference in the ring a bit more. However, Sabu could be used to this ring. He has faced opponents in it before, so he won't be a surprise coming to the UK seeing this ring as maybe Mr. Monday Night Rob Van Dam was. No, Ross. I think Sabu really now feels that he's he's got his he's he's at home now in the EWA. He's certainly got his bearings a bit more in this ring. And Sabu reverses an Irish whip and hits a slingshot leg Larry almost. And he goes to the cover. One, two. No way, no way at all are you gonna beat a big man like Alf Herman with that. And there's a there's that flip patented leg drop. Sabu flip leg flip leg drop there from the outside. But and it again, only gets only a two count. Point. Both men getting back to their feet now. Sabu going in with a kick and a punch. Whips Herman to the corner. Doesn't quite get the slingshot lariat. Sorry, not slingshot, springboard lariat. Alf Herman, is he going to get the suplex? No! Instead, he gives a big clubbing forearm to Sabu. Alf Herman sets Sabu up in the corner. Ooh! That's just under 300 pounds coming straight at you. Sabu's going to be feeling that. Alf Herman picks up Sabu and slams him down. Alf Herman goes to the turnbuckle. Alf Herman now on the second rope. What's he going to do here? It's a headbutt. with a big headbutt. A big headbutt from the big German there. We talked about that car crash analogy with Sabu. I think that headbutt there, you have to look at it from... Uh, from Wolf Herman's point of view, that's got to feel like a freight train hitting Sabu. Certainly, Kenny, that's quite a good analogy there. Sabu is up, though. Seems to have a second burst of energy. Surely, yeah, this one, I think it is a Frankensteiner off the top rope by Sabu. And that's going to down Wolf Herman. And he, Sabu, Sabu calls for the chair. Muhammad tossing the this chair is what, into This the is ring. what we've discussed earlier. It's the Sabu triple jump. He seemed to screw that up, but landed on his feet. Almost another injury there, landing on what? the chair. I don't think he messed up there, Ross. I think he just caught as he flipped. Power out bomb! Of, out of the corner of his eye, he saw Old Herman One, getting up. two. Well, I think you may be right there. But Ron Van Damme's now at ringside. Ron Van Damme at ringside. Distracting off Herman, lets Sabu throw the chair into Herman's face. What's this? Sabu going to the top with the chair now. 
Oh, this could be the super Arabian face buster here. We've seen him do this many times. It's yes. the atomic Arabian face buster, Kenny. That's the atomic Arabian face buster. One, two, three, and Sabu downs Alf Herman to go through into the next round. And Rob Van Dam hits the ring. That's right, Ross. Here comes Rob Van Dam. Battering Alf Herman. Fists and kicks all over the place. He throws Gary Dowell out of the way. Both men now. Oh no. This is oh, it. it's Rolling Thunder! Rolling Thunder there by Sabu and Rob Van Dam. Sabu's going to the table. Sabu trying to bring a table into the ring. I don't Here comes Michael Kovacs. I can just see Michael Kovacs coming in now. And he's stopped Sabu putting that table in the ring and chases Rob Van Dam out of the ring. Kovacs and him. I wonder if Van Damme have any comments for the camera. No, they just give their sign. Yeah, as you were saying, Kovacs and Herman, the CWA counterparts, helping each other out. That was a great match for us, a great match. So now we have the semis up now. So there it is. Van Damme's going to meet Sabu, and Dirt Bike's going to meet Mikey. A very, very interesting set of semi-finals. Ted Tanabe again for what should be possibly the most exciting match, technically speaking, on the card tonight. Let's go down to our ring announcer. Tanabe, I think there's perhaps a misspelling on the on the ring announcer's cards there. So quite dramatic music here. And we're now awaiting on the entrance of Mazukazu Fukuda. Of yep. course, he is currently one half of the Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champs in Wrestle Dream Factory in Japan. That's right, Ross. Wrestle Dream Factory, of course, a fairly young group in Japanese terms. 
And they a have a, they and have not a particularly well-known one. They, have they do have a great number of very, very great athletes. And Masakatsu like Fukuda is just one of those. They have uh, they have affiliations with FMW, and they have worked alongside Mishinoku Pro and a few other smaller independent promotions in Japan. But certainly, from a technical point of view, Fukuda is probably as good as they come in Japan. And in British terms, Stevie Gray on the map, there are a few people that can match him, Ross. He's getting on a bit in years now. However, when it comes down to on the map ability, he's certainly got it all there. That's right, Ross. There are some wrestlers that we've seen around the world, people like Hulk Hogan, people like Randy Savage, who have deteriorated with age. But with Stevie Gray, I think his style is such that as he gets older, he just takes it down to the mat and he's got that experience, he's got the knowledge, he knows every, just about every hold there is to know. And I don't, right. think, I don't think Fukuda will find this an easy ride at all. Not at all. Fukuda, although is a very technically very sound wrestler, the Japanese style is very different to the old British style and Stevie Gray is certainly British old school. Stevie Gray, definitely a, a great, great athlete from that British old comes, school. Comes from the generation of the Steve Regos, the Marty Jones, the Dave Taylors of the world. And I think you can quite easily put Stevie Gray's name there for, in terms of pure talent. He maybe doesn't have the charisma that Steve Regal has, but he's just as good a wrestler. That's Fukuda's right. trying to, Fukuda's there now applying a, a knee lock. Kind of great binding the leg. Looks like he's maybe going for the bone arrow, but doesn't even Stevie get Gray, halfway there. Stevie Gray wriggles out very quickly. It wasn't a pretty escape, it wasn't a technical escape. But it was appreciated by the crowd. Did you notice that, Kenny? Yes, the crowd are very interested in this. I think the crowd realises the talent that both these men have. They know that it's not going to be an extreme battle like they might see from a Sabu or a Rob Van Dam. But they know that they will see a very sound technical match here. Certainly. Earlier on, the crowd seemed really to be wanting to see some maybe blood and gore and hard-hitting chair shots and the like. But in this one, they are reasonably respective and no derogatory chance. And uh, they seem to be enjoying it. It's always nice to see fans appreciate these technically skilled guys for what they can do. Here we see, here we see Stevie Great with a great reversal. And appreciated by the crowd, not just turning that. Aside. Yes, the crowd seems to be impressed with Stevie Gray's talent so far. I think a lot of this crowd are quite young, may not remember Stevie Gray from his heyday on... When World back, of Sport. Oh yes, on World of Sport, joint promotions. Stevie Gray was one of the top names in that, often partnered Big Daddy. Yes, the late Shirley Crabtree. I don't think, I don't think... Uh, but it's Steve Gray that has remained in the sport and Big Daddy is literally dead. As big a star as Big Daddy was, Ross, I really don't think that uh, there was anything he could have taught Steve Gray about the art of wrestling. Maybe about the art of shouting easy at the fans, but uh, but I, uh, I don't think that Big Daddy could teach anything to Stevie Gray about the art of wrestling on the mat. As we see Fukuda here with a great headlock, Stevie Gray wriggling, tries to be trying to escape. He is, he is, does seem to be working his way out here. And there he has, he's worked his way out of that terrific side headlock that Fukuda had on. I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record player, but once again, the crowd really appreciates it. This is very unusual. On the last EWA show, there was some scientific wrestling and the crowd just didn't respond. There was chance of boring, there was chance of we want blood, there was some very derogatory comments, but the fans are really appreciating this. I think, Ross, that this year, with the addition of the security and the crowd barriers, I think the crowd has tried to settle down a little more. I think at Ultra Chaos, the crowd were just a little bit wild, a little bit uncontrolled. Here, they're sitting down, they're relaxing, they're enjoying the show for what it is. They're enjoying the wrestling. After all, that's what it says on the marquee, wrestling, and that's, that's what right. we're seeing that's right here, That's completely correct, Kenny. Both men lock up again. Takes, like, a, a leg sweep. Stevie Gray with a leg lock here, trying to turn Fukuda over. I'm not quite sure what he's going for here. Maybe an STF. It's hard to tell at this point. He's locked up one of the legs. Oh, he's locked this up the other leg. I think it is. This looks like it might just be a surfboard, Ross. 
It could be, of course, a speciality move by people such as uh, Sean Waltman, aka 123 Kid or Six, also Jushin Liger, very popular move in Japan, this. Yes, Ros, I think Fukuda probably knows this move better than anyone else on the show tonight. It is a very, very popular move in Japan. And we see Stevie Gray Stevie here. Gray. So, I mean, it's quite unusual that Stevie Gray is implementing a Japanese move on a Japanese Stevie Gray wrestler. has now the surfboard applied. This is a submission move. Fukuda is in agony. But Just look at his face. He's in absolute agony. This one all depends. Both oh, shoulders, shoulders down. down. Both. One, two. Wow. Two count there. Stevie Gray there just realizing at the last second that his shoulders were down as well. And Tanabe was actually making a double count there. So he had to he had to let Fukuda go. Which is a, it's a shame for him. That is a, it's a tough move to apply and uh, a tough move to hold. Really, there, so much strength is required in the legs to hold the wrestler up in that position. That's Steve completely Gray, correct, Kenny. Steve Gray needed to get a submission early or the pin... Or otherwise, he was just going to have to let the move Fukuda go. Fukuda takes it down, back down to the mat with a, a sort of hammerlock arm bar once again, if I'm permitted to say that. Goes now, into, into, a goes now into a side lock. headlock. I think that's a front face a front lock. front face lock, excuse me, Russ. No problem. A standing front Struggle. face lock there by Fukuda, but Steve Gray's hand works round, but no, Fukuda's got that hand and turns it into an arm bar. But Steve Gray comes back with a kick from the flat of the foot, which is legal, and tries to grapevine the leg. But he hasn't managed Again, to do so, but he's turning it over. We saw this same type almost of knee bar single, maneuver. A single-legged Boston Crab, almost. It is almost a half crab, yes, Ross, but now, no, he looks like he might be going for the surfboard again. Now, this is on you. Or could this be the regal crutch? Nope, I think it might be the... It does look like he's going for the surfboard again, Ross. Now, that is unusual. He didn't get the win with it earlier. Perhaps he thinks he can get something with it this time. I don't know. But he has, he's got Fukuda's arms again. It looks like he may just get the move once more. But Fukuda's but Fukuda, arms Fukuda escaped. escaped. And very sportingly, Stevie Gray steps back and says it's fair enough that's a, a nice element to see and a very british element there from stevie gray i think both men recognize each other's talents on the mat and don't want to don't want to show any kind of disrespect there is no there is no grudge in this match there is no feud there is no anger this is just two wrestlers wrestling as and Fukuda I think that's a, it's a, a wonderful thing to see. That's exactly correct, Kenny. As Fakuda applies, is that a reverse chin lock? I think you'll find Stevie Gray is applying that reverse oh, sorry, chin lock. Sorry, sorry, I stand corrected. Stevie Gray applies the reverse chin lock. But Fakuda's Fakuda's leg gets the rope just as Fakuda gave up. If you just you just hear that, Fakuda said he gave up, but his leg was already on the rope. So the referee Tanabe, Ted Tanabe made Steve Gray break the hold. Indeed. Steve Gray now with an Irish whip goes with a headbutt to Fukuda's lower abdomen. Abdominal area. Goes now with a, a double, double leg, leg take down. down. A pinning pin combination. Well, Only Fukuda a two count slips here. out the back door again. Stevie Gray, I'm surprised, Ross. He's had most of the offense in this match so far. That's right, but don't be fooled. These Japanese competitors can pull a victory out the back door any second. That's how they train them in Japan. They train them in the dojos, and they're one of the best wrestlers, if not the best wrestlers on the planet, can be found in Japan. That's exactly right, Ross. These guys are as well-schooled in every form of pinning. This is a neck breaker. Oh! It's a man maneuver popularized in America by Rick Rude, but uh, Stevie Gray using it right here in Walthamstow to great effect. Gets about a one count there. No, I'm getting a pinfall out of it, no. Goes for another net breaker. Or is he going for a he's hangman? He's going for a hangman here, Ross, which is a brutal submission hold. No. But he no, gives up. I think, I think he may have been going for a hangman there, but he gave up and went for the neck breaker instead. And the hangman, of course, is a brutal, brutal move. 
Yeah, it really does a great, great deal of damage to those vertebrae in the neck cross. It's a horrible move to suffer. And that neck breaker is often a very, very good setup for that maneuver. And there's a suplex from Fukuda. So Fukuda's right back in the offensive with a suplex to gain a two count. The crowd very respectful still of this bout. Slips out the suplex into a roll-up, reverse roll-up. Two count. Only a two count. About a two and a half count added, add, hasten to add. Stevie Gray sends Fukuda off the ropes and heads Stevie for a Gray drop with kick. a drop kick. Not something we see from some of the older wrestlers in the sport much, but uh, Stevie Gray proving there's still life in the old dog yet. Stevie now with a whip off the ropes. He's going caught. for a cross body, but it's a slam. Two and three. Well, that is a surprise victory there. I can only presume he's maybe came down badly on his shoulder. Well, he seems to have got up quite quickly there, Ross. I think perhaps he was just uh, just winded, just surprised by the move, and uh, there he's lost the match. That's very unfortunate for Stevie Gray after having so much of the offense tonight. Right now. This is the final non-tournament match of St. Valentine's Day Massacre, and there's a little bit of a story that goes with this. This is a very talented young man by the name of Stevie Knight. Believe me, if anyone is going to go far over the next few years in British, from the British circuit, moving over to America or whatnot, I would expect it to be this man. Now, Stevie Knight was originally scheduled to be in the tournament. However, due to an argument with the suits in the EWA, he was dropped in favor of one of the Americans, I'm led to believe, or possibly one of the Germans. So, Stevie Knight still had a contract for tonight's show and issued an open challenge. He said he didn't care who he faced, he just wanted someone to face so he could prove what a talent and asset he is to the wrestling business. So let's see who will accept this challenge. And he's laughing at whoever's come out, and it's Jason Cross. Kenny, what do you think about him laughing at Jason Cross? Well, this is strange, Ross. I mean, Jason Cross has already had one tough match tonight, losing to Mikey Whipwreck. So perhaps, uh, perhaps Stevie feels that having had Mikey soften Jason Cross up for him, this is going to be an easy victory. Well... Stevie Knight is a very, very talented. Well, uh, Stevie Knight, in no uncertain terms, telling the fans what he thinks about their comments. Yes, uh, these wrestlers—they're—they're they're never ones to hold back their feelings on anything. And that fan obviously said something to upset Stevie, and Stevie let him know what he thought of him. There's the bell now, as. Uh, Stevie's open challenge is answered by Jason Cross here. This should be an outstanding match for us. These are two of the best wrestlers on the British circuit. That's certainly correct. There's a front face lock there by Stevie Knight. Into a side headlock. Into a side headlock off the rope off by the Stevie Knight and knocks Jason Cross down. Uh, but Jason Cross is slow to get back up. Stevie Knight was expecting him to get back up quicker. But he was quite slow there. Though possibly Jason Cross is quite tired from his first match against Mikey Whipwreck. But he's caught there Stevie Knight with an, a hip toss. Stevie Knight not very keen on this abuse he seems to be receiving from the crowd. He goes again with the side headlock there, Ross. And, and again off, off the ropes. ropes. Ah, but he blocks the hip toss this time. Into a rocker dropper. Or a showstopper as it's now being known elsewhere. I'll break your neck every time, Ross. A terrible, terrible move to take. Certainly is. Snap suplex there by Stevie Knight. Come on, get him up, come on. Knight asking the referee to quickly get Jason Cross up. Knight eager to continue his onslaught. Gut wrench suplex there, Ross. One, two. Cover. Stevie Knight seems very impatient with the referee. Not getting down to count quick enough. Was that a low blow there? I think it might have been. Jason Cross sets up for a suplex and 
Stevie Knight comes down hard, catching his head there, it seems. Also on the way down, Irish whip into the corner with a punch there to the, to the abdomen. Stevie Knight up in the corner, kips up. Oh no. Sen crashing to the floor. Now, Kenny, do you realize how tall that ring is? Oh, yeah, for us, that stood next to that ring. It's a good eight or nine feet off the ground. A Topicon Hilo! And Stevie went all the way to the floor there. And then, before he could even really get back to his feet and regain his bearings, Jason Cross hit him with that Topicon Hilo. And he so smashed Stevie. his head into the guardrail there. They're making this match fairly extreme. Stevie, I think, is really suffering at this point. He's not really had a chance to get his breath back. But there, he there he sends Jason Cross's head into the guardrail. And there with a chair Ooh. shot across Jason Cross's injured lower back. Did you hear that? I heard it, Ross. That was vicious. And he goes to use the chair again. But Jason catches... Oh, another chair shot. This time by Jason Cross. And they're not holding back at all with these shots. Stephen Knight goes for a whip, reversed twice. Jason Cross moving the guardrail, almost taking out some fans' knees there. Stephen Knight goes follow up, but he gets tossed into the second row almost. He's getting back drops right on top of some of our fans there in the front row. And the chair again. These fans have paid the 20, 20 something pounds for their front row seats. I don't think they were expecting to get quite this close to the action, though, are they, Russ? I don't think so, but. They're getting their money's worth, whatever the case. You can see one fan there. Oh, again. Towering backwards from the action there. But Stevie and Jason, they don't care about the fans. They just want to fight. Stevie Knight goes to the ring apron. Maybe anticipating Jason Cross getting up quicker than he would do. But Jason Cross batters back with a few punches. Oh. Stevie Knight lands right in his back on that wooden floor. As you were saying earlier, Kenny, no padding on this floor. Yeah, Ross, I think, I think by the end of this match, having seen those whips into the ropes, those chair shots, that bump he took over the, over the guardrail, I think we may be seeing two men leaving this match with injured backs. Certainly. I mean, if Jason Cross isn't feeling the pain from the match he had earlier with Mikey Whitbrick. Ooh. He's certainly going to feel it now. What's this? He's going for an elevator. No. I can't call that move. I don't what know what you'd call that. What was that? An elevator into a sit down face first power bomb, I guess, Ross. <laughs> well, if you want to be technical, Kenny, that's just about it. A oh, Mission Oku driver. driver 2. He seems surprised that his trademark Mishinoku driver didn't be scoring the pinfall there. But Jason Cross is back on the offense. Jason Cross, astonishingly, after that weird face-first powerbomb type maneuver. Another Liger bomb there by Jason Cross. Gets him a two count. And Ross, it's amazing how much this match has gone back and forth. They've both hit some big, big moves. Taking some tough, a tough shots. Doctor bomb. A doctor bomb there by Stevie Knight. These guys are really giving the middle finger to anyone who is dissing British wrestling. Both these guys have been trained purely on the British circuit, and both these guys are putting together a very fast-paced, high-moved, action-packed match. No one really can say anything bad about this match. Oh, now there is a patented move. I know where he learned that one from. Doc Dean speciality kick to the back of the back. Did I make sense here, Kenny? I don't think you did, Ross. But we get the idea. It is a trademark move of Doc Dean. Doc Dean, who, of course, trained Jason Cross, I believe. That's correct. So, yes, he's bound to have picked up some influences there from one of the, one of the real legends on the circuit today. Cross now whipped into the corner. Power slam by Stevie Knight. One, two, just a two count. And Stevie looks tired here. I'm not sure how much. Both he... men look tired. Both men look as if they're feeling the effects of this match. Is this another Liger bomb? It's a pile driver. 
and Stevie's leg went right down into the canvas. One, two, but he still manages to count out. Count out, kick out. I'm getting my words a bit tongue-tied here now, Kenny. Well, certainly the excitement Ross is getting to all of us, and I can understand how confused you might be. This match has been very fast-paced, a lot of big moves, some moves that we don't even know how to call. And uh, here it goes to the outside. I think we may be able to call this a little better because it's a Well, I can call that a punch. punch. I can call that a punch. But Jason Cross is quick to take it back in the ring, maybe realizing that keeping it on the outside could actually be detrimental to his energy. He's maybe wanting to try and finish off this match up now. I think he knows, Ross, that he can't win the match when he's outside the ring. If he's inside, Stevie might be counted out. If they're both inside, he might be able to score the pinfall. The referee counted very quickly there, but Stevie Knight but Steve, yeah, manages Stevie to Knight break the count. To back up. A shoulder into the ribs. A flip Rolls up. Over. That's a Stevie Knight patented move there. And heads back with a spin kick. Give that flip into the ring over the person's back. Is a move that Stevie Knight perfected himself and has told me a lot about. Stevie Knight off the top row with a vicious drop kick there, straight into the ribs. He got a lot of momentum there, gets a, gets two counts. And Stevie Knight looks like he's heading back to the top rope. What's he going for now? He doesn't quite make it as Jason Cross steps back. Yeah, it's not very clear what he was going for there, Ross, but Jason Cross seemed to just take a half step back and Stevie this is a obviously... power bomb. Oh, almost a power bomb stroke pedigree. Stephen I landing right in his head there, and Jason Here Cross ascends to the top rope now. Is this going to be a moonsault? It certainly is. Moonsault press. One, two, three, and it's all over. Stevie Knight's open challenge was accepted and won by a certain Jason Cross. Stevie Knight will be bitterly disappointed in not getting that victory, but I think it was, I think it was definitely that powerbomb stroke pedigree maneuver that took out Stevie Knight there, but certainly both men have impressed immensely in this contest. It's a great victory for Jason Cross, coming off the victory for Mikey Whipwright. There is no better way to get your momentum back than to come back and beat somebody of the caliber of Steve Knight in the same night. No pun intended. So Jason Cross, although he's been knocked down, he's back up again and ready for the next EWA event. Well, Kenny, that music can only mean one thing. That's right, Ross. This is, once again, the most suicidal, homicidal, genocidal, death-defying athlete on the face of this planet. It's the one, the only. It's Sabu. And here we have another look at the Brack thing, which just confirms that Van Damme, Rob Van Damme, now is facing Sabu. Of course, another semi, Mikey Whipwreck, will be taking on the Dirt Bike Kid. This is now a very, very interesting scenario, Kenny. Yes, Ross, we've seen Sabu versus Van Damme at certain times in the past, but now they're as close as they've ever been. And uh, I just don't know how this one's going to break down. Well, they are tag partners, Kenny. So will they put their tag partnership aside in view of winning the tournament and the titles? Or will they refuse to fight and want a three-way dance? Or will they want a tag match? I don't know. Well, as you say, Ross, we just don't know what's going on. As we hear the sounds of Pantera's song, What is Van Damme's theme tune? But no sign of Van Damme at the moment. Here he comes at last. It's Mr. Mr. Monday. Monday Night, Rob Van Damme. Moving a bit too fast with the cameraman there. We've got the hold of Ross. Our cameramen have done a great job tonight, haven't they? Well, the camera work is of quite a decent quality compared to what you see on most British wrestling videos. Remember, 
Although the EWA, in terms of hardcore wrestling, is a large organization, really in terms of finance, is fairly small. Financially, Ross, the EWA may not have the strongest base, but in terms of talent, it matches up to any promotion in the world. That's completely correct, Kenny. Rob Van Dam, Sabu. Oh, hold on, hold on, Ross. Mohammed seems to be saying something, and he's, he's calling for the mic. All right, let's just shut up a second, Kenny, and let's see what Mohammed has to say. So we take away finalist and put in by. So that means that Dirtbike Kid versus Mikey Whipwreck becomes our final, Kenny. Yes, Ross. Well, we predicted that Van Damme versus Sabu might happen, and uh, we predicted that it might cause some fireworks. Apparently, Mohammed getting word from Bill Alfonso, the manager of Van Damme and Sabu, saying that uh, their family values, they called it, their team spirit was more important than any belt the EWA could give them. Well, you can say that, Kenny, but can I just point out that when Mr. Money Eye, Rob Van Dam, just went through the curtain there, he seemed to almost jokingly say, and Sabu. So possibly a bit of friction there between the two. Maybe, I mean, uh, Rob Van Dam has no title to lose. Sabu seems to have now walked away from his European Junior Heavyweight title. Yeah, it does seem a little strange. As here comes the dirt bike kid to face Mikey Whipwreck in what is now, it seems, the final of the tournament. And we're guaranteed we're going to see a third bike head content. He's going to win there. But we are now guaranteed to see a new champion crown tonight for the European Junior Heavyweight Championship. That's right, Ross. And it's going to be one of these two men. These two men have held the title before. They've battled over it in the States. They've battled over it in the Walthamstow Assembly well, on the EWA. It's come full circle once again. It's come all the way full circle. We're back to Mikey Whitbreck and Dirtbike Kid yet again. Here we see Mikey coming to the ring. That knee obviously, obviously not in the best shape it's ever been in. He's having trouble getting down those steps. Well, obviously... Dirtbike Kid must be the favourite now with Mikey's knee in such bad condition. Well, yeah, you would think so, Ross, but... Uh, a Dirtbike Kid did have a slightly shorter match again against Phil Powers. Mikey's, Mikey's tough, though, Ross, and Mikey's got a heart bigger than his body. He's just... Well, Mikey Whitbrick is trained by Cactus Jack. And we all know how much Cactus Jack likes to fight, even when he's hurting. When he's hurting, 
he's having fun. Precisely, Ross. And I think maybe a little bit of that's rubbed off on Mikey here. Mikey playing to the crowd for support. Very unusual that Mikey is getting more support than the homegrown dirt bike kid. Well, I think, uh, I think here, Ross, Mikey may not be much of an underdog anymore in ECW, but I think here with his knee in such bad condition on the Dirt Bike Kids home turf, especially after the Dirt Bike Kids scoring that pinfall over the Ultra Chaos, I think people really do see Mikey as the underdog in this match. Possibly, possibly. Dirt Bike Kid almost getting not just a no reaction, getting a negative reaction. He's getting certainly a mixture of cheers and boos. I don't think people are quite sure how to take the Dirt Bike Kid. As Mikey's introduced there. Oh, and he mocks Hulk Hogan, holding his hand to his ear. And the crowd are cheering. This crowd just loves Mikey Whipwreck. And it's hard not to love a guy so friendly. You've got, you've got a feel for the dirt bike kid, though. What's he doing wrong? He's, he's doing his best for the UK fans. He's going out there, you know, trying to raise the Union Jack high, put it straight into promotions like ECW and Japan, a, victor a victory surely for the dirt bike kid would force more people to come back to the EWA to challenge for the title if he won it. What? Mikey Whipwreck could easily win both titles and disappear off to the US again or disappear to Japan. Well, I think for the dirt bike kid that is a fear and I think he's He's really got to go all out to win this match as he goes right after Mikey's bum knee. A clean break there. That's something though, Dirt Bike Kid maybe using a bit of underhand tactics going straight for the knee, but is willing to give the clean break. I think that's what the extreme style is all about. Showing sportsmanship, but uh, not too much sportsmanship. Mikey getting a chant of his name there from the crowd. So certainly no guessing as who the crowd would like to see become victorious in this matchup. Dirt bike kids sent off the ropes by Mike Whitwreck, ducks the clothesline, misses the clothesline, gets caught with a stone cold stunner. The stone cold stunner, the diamond cutter, call it what you will, Ross. It's a devastating move. And we see that as the dirt bike kid crawling about on the floor, just trying to regain his bearings down. Mikey's possibly going for a dive, but Dirt Bike Kid. No, Dirt Bike grabs that injured leg and starts battering this that This is knee despicable. With this really is. I was quite sickened by what Jason Cross was doing to Mikey's knee, but this is just uncalled for. For the Dirt Bike Kid to uh, go after the knee, that's understandable in an athletic com competition to maybe apply a submission hold to that knee, but. What he's doing now, he's, he's just going after that knee with, with... Oh, please, please no. Oh, no. Oh, my. Did you hear that, Kenny? Did you hear that chair? This, this is just horrible, Ross. For, oh for, my. for the dirt bike kid to do what? this. This is despicable. This is worse than what Just Incredible did to Mikey Whitbrick. Just Incredible applied a submission move to re-injure the knee. He applied a legal move. Now, while I'm not saying it's not legal to go to the outside and brawl, the dirt bike this kid. is some underhand tactics oh. to Mikey. Mikey has a face drop. There with, a, with a stun gun type maneuver on the, on the guardrail. But I, I just don't know if Mikey can stand up now. Mikey, Mikey's knee just battered with chairs, with forearms on the apron on the guardrail it's this is this is horrific but mikey is fighting mikey back is back on his feet dumps dumps the dirt bike kid on the chair there sets him up on the chair what's he going to go for here oh big clothesline big big clothesline that's going to win the dirt bike kid there and hit him hard on the chest area and hopefully it'll give mikey just just a little room to breathe a little room to to get himself back in order because his knee has to be in so much pain right now, Ross. Well, Mikey's getting a lot of momentum there from the crowd support and he's back on his feet. <laughs> Mikey Whipwreck, Ross, such a lovable guy, such a friendly, enthusiastic, hard-working wrestler. Oh, don't get me wrong, Kenny. I respect Mikey Whipwreck, but I also respect the dirt bike kid. 
Both are great athletes and a baseball slide there straight to the face of Mikey Whitbreck. Now, that's my point, Ross. Mikey is just so hardworking, so enthusiastic, loves the sport of wrestling so much. That's a flip plancha, Kenny. Yeah, that's right, Ross. I, it appears at this stage, though, that all of Mikey's hard work, all of Mikey's enthusiasm, all of Mikey's energy is going to come to nothing because the dirt bike kid is just destroying Mikey at this point. And frankly, Ross, you, you, it's, you've it's, got a not, question. You've it's got not a, pleasant to watch. You've got to question what the referee is doing. This reminds me of a situation in the WWF a few years ago when it was the Quebecers against Owen Hart and Bret Hart and the referee did stop the match because Bret was just unable to continue because of his knee and really something like that should be happening now because Mikey Whitbreak Mikey Whitbreak is too stupid to understand when to quit I don't think it's stupidity Ross I think it's just gut I think Mikey sees quitting as the well he's not sensible enough then when to quit why jeopardize another year on the sidelines just for one match and two titles? Is it really worth that? I don't know. For Mikey Whipwreck, perhaps it is, Ross. Perhaps he feels that these fans are only going to get this one chance to see him. It's his only time in Britain this year. It's his only time in Europe this year. And I think perhaps Mikey feels that to quit would be to let those fans down. And letting the fans down is something that Mikey Whipwreck just does But Mikey do. Whipwreck comes back with another whip. Whip off the ropes, but Dirt Bike Kid. It's a neck breaker there. That's right, Kenny. And Dirt Bike Kid sets up Mikey Whipwreck and ascends to the top rope. He's going up top. What's he going to go for here, Ross? He's got a whole plethora of top rope moves. It's a leg drop. It's a big, big top rope, top rope leg drop. Almost similar to Brian Christopher's Tennessee Jam. Or even Bobby Eaton's Alabama Jam. Well, of course, that came first, Ross, but uh, he doesn't get the pinfall, though. He's going back to the top rope again. Mike, can Mikey stand up? This is the question. Can Mikey defend himself? Here? Mikey knocks the bike kid down onto the turnbuckle and this time he's going with a whipper snapper could he get it could he sneak a victory out of the bag with this this is the whipper snapper kenny he's no. going for a, oh my goodness oh no third by kid reverses the whipper snapper throwing mikey to the mat third by kid now right up in the top turnbuckle comes over with a splash hits hard one two Three, we have a new European Junior Heavyweight Champion and we have a new British Junior Heavyweight Champion. It's the first time the British Junior Heavyweight title has been held by someone from Britain since Stevie J. And now we see, now we see the, the Brack thing. Kill the graphic, Kenny. No, Tell no. the man, oh, kill the graphic. We have someone. We have someone in the ring. Two here. people. Oh Van God. Dam and Sabu have hit the ring. Van Dam and Sabu in the ring. Van Dam taking over Mikey's knee. Sabu attacking the dirt bike kid. Oh, this is oh, it. No. This is it. It's rolling, rolling thunder. thunder on the dirt bike kid. Rolling thunder there. Van Dam pushing the referee and the and the ring announcer out of the way. And Sabu, Sabu pushing. Rolls, rolls dirt bike kid to the floor. They're attacking Mike. Oh, this is sick. This is sick. They're attacking Mikey's knee. I, I'm not going to call this, down. Kenny. I'm just too sickened by this. They this is uncalled for. This is horrible. This man is injured. He's had two, two very, very tough matches tonight. Grueling matches. He's exhausted. But these two just don't he's care. They just don't. Too What's Van Damme saying? Van Damme, they just don't. What's Van Damme saying? Van Damme just said, don't you go crowning any European champion now. Oh, look out! Oh, Perman in the ring now! Oh, Perman attacking Sabu! Michael Kovacs attacking Rob Van Damme! What's going on here? The referee Ted Kanabi trying to get some kind of order here, but I don't think he's going to get it. I just can't call this, Kenny. This is too much is happening at the one time. These four men just wild, wild, and rolling. 
and Van Damme. Van Damme caught the door. Oh, oh my God! Oh my. I'm sorry if I steal a phrase from someone else in the wrestling business, but that's the only sentence that can epitomise that DDT. And a vicious powerbomb there by Old Karma after that incredible DDT by Michael Kovacs and Rob Van Damme. And we have a tag match. It and it's a German suplex. I guess an Austrian suplex would call it for Michael Kovacs, Ross, but yeah. A big, big, high-impact manoeuvre by Kovacs on Rob Van Damme. All impact, no bridge whatsoever. It seems that referee Ted Tanabe is back in the ring. It looks like he's going to call yep, this a we match. We have a match. We have a match in our hands. The show is not over yet. We do have a new European and British junior heavyweight champion, but we've got another match on the way. That's right, Ross. There's no fat lady singing in Waltham still just yet. As Van Damme sent off the road with oh, that spinning, heel kick. spinning leg Larry, I'd call that Kenny. And now Sabu sent off the ropes, oh, manages to avoid Van, Van Damme, but catches a nasty clothesline there from Alf Herman. So Sabu's now on the outside, which leaves Kovacs Van Damme to work over. Van Damme to the floor. And Kovacs is sending to the top rope. What's it going to be? A plancha on both men. As Old Perman now comes out to the And floor. now the action is spilled to the floor. Well, we know how these how the ECW exactly stars like Kenny. to brawl on the floor. Let's just see if the CWA superstars like it just as much. Alf Herman has got the chair. Herman's got the chair. But Sabu but manages to stop Alf Herman using the chair and gets the chair for himself. And oh, over the back of the big German. Broke the chair across Alf Herman's back there. And Van Damme's whip again oh. sent almost into the second row. They've uh, actually broken the guardrail there. Look, a fan is trying to protect Van, Van Damme. To protect Van but security will have to get that fan back. Yes, I think security stepping in there. The fans are trying to protect Rob Van Dam from Michael Kovacs. And Sabu and Herman head into the crowd on the opposite side of the arena. We're going to try and keep you with both feet, with all of this action as much as we can, but uh, we've only Van got Damme two looks cameras in, in the pain. building. We're going to show you as much as we can of this. Oh. Oh. Van Dam drops throat first across the guardrail. We can't see what's going on with Sabu and uh, Old Herman over on the other side. But we understand they're... they're Yes, they're, they're in the crowd as well. The brawling is just going on and on. Van Damme now coming back with a few heels to the back of the head. I can't see that over there. I can't. What is that? Well, I just saw Sabu walking there. I think it might have been a big slam on the floor there. Or on the floor. Tell. Or perhaps, I mean, it's very crowded at the back there. Maybe onto the chairs. It's very hard to tell from this angle. There's a chant of ECW, quite ironic because Herman and Kovacs are both in the CWA and Sabu and Van Damme both preach the praises of the WWF. They claim to be infiltrators in ECW and not competitors representing ECW. That's right, Ross. E Mr. Monday Night, that's, uh, that says it all. ECW doesn't have a Monday Night show. They don't even compete on Monday nights. So you know what he's alluding to there. These are two WWF superstars, or so they claim. Van Damme and Sabu work together to beat over Herman. What is this? It's Air Sabu! That's right, Kenny, Air Sabu. With oh. assistance, now that's a spinning heel kick. But that's Air Sabu with the assistance on Mr. Monday Night. We have one count, two count. Kovacs breaks up the pin there as Ulf Herman kicked out as well. And Kovacs now Sabu now sent to the outside. As Ulf Herman picking up for a suplex. No, he's setting Rob Van Damme up on the top rope now. What's he going to do here? Looks like it could be a superplex, Ross. I've seen Michael Kovacs go up on the other turnbuckle, reminiscent of Eddie Guerrero and the late Art Bar. A move. That's right, Ross. Los Gringos Locos used that maneuver to great effect. In the Triple E's promotion in Mexico. But... Unfortunately there for Kovacs and Herman, they didn't have quite the same success there as Van Damme kicked out. And Sabu now Ooh, the ring. Did you see that chair shot? I saw that, Ross. That was vicious. As Sabu now applies the single-armed uh, camel clutch to Kovacs. And Van Damme, oh, with a baseball slide type drop kick. There's right Mohamed. The Mohamed likes what he sees. Mohamed's very happy with, his, with the 
performance of his team here. But Van Damme's just been sent to the outside, which leaves Sabu prey to Herman and Kovacs once again. Back and forth action, back and forth from these competitors in the EWA tonight. February 14th, St. Valentine's Day Massacre. A double drop, drop toe hold there, followed by a double elbow to the back. But only a two count there as well. Sabu is tenacious. Sabu is used to this beating. He's wrestled in New Japan, FMW, All Japan, the WWF, WCW, ECW, the Mexican promotions of AAA, EMWL. You name it, Sabu has wrestled there. He's used to taking a beating. But still, it doesn't mean he's unbeatable. It just takes a lot to put the wild man down. And frankly, Ross, the amount of, the amount of, uh, the amount of, shots that these men have taken tonight I don't know how any of them are still, still standing it's They've unbelievable it is an unbelievable display of athletic performance and no other sport will you see this forget boxing it doesn't even come half as close as this the UFC may be no holds barred but you don't have chairs and foreign objects to deal with this is where it's at the world of professional wrestling Kenny what was that well Ross we've We've seen that uh, it seems like Kovacs and Herman have been taking a leaf out of a few other famous tag teams because that move right there was uh, also used by as a finisher by the great late great Southern boys of Tracy Smothers and Steve Armstrong. Of course, Tracy Smothers now competing in for the FBI in ECW. Herman getting a two count there. And Tracy Smothers is a, a former co-holder of the ECW World Tag Team Championships with Little Guido. A slam there. Oh, What's this? He picks up Sabu. A double leg drop. I've never seen anything like that a before. A very, Ross. very innovative move there, Kenny. Oh, going looked like Kovacs went for a drop kick there, but it's a it's a, a Boston Crab now. And Sabu. Off the Sabu top rope with a leg drop. It looks like they've been studying their tag teams too, Ross, because that was just like a, an old finisher by the Quebecers. We're seeing it all tonight. We're seeing it all. You name it, and we're seeing it. We've got blood. Of Herman is bleeding. He's been cut open. He was cut open earlier, and it seems his cut has been opened up once again. Yep, Ross. As, as now, both men ascend the turnbuckles. Both men go to the top rope. Michael Kovacs is not moving in the center of the ring. I'm lost for words, Kenny. That was a stunning move there. A splash in the leg job. Two, three. It's, it's all, all over. over. That's right. It's all over. Sabu and Van Damme, the WWF infiltrators in ECW. With that devastating move with both men coming off the top rope. Get the one, two, three in the victory with Sabu pinning Michael Kovacs. Sabu has a message for all the fans out here with that middle finger to the camera. These two men, they just, they just don't like anyone. They're, they're arrogant. As Bel Alfonso, as Bel Alfonso says, the only thing they like is big checks. They're not interested in touring the world. They're not interested in titles. They're not interested in anything apart from big checks. They'll wrestle where there is the big checks, and certainly tonight they'll be getting some big checks from the European Wrestling Association, Kenny. Yeah, Ross, tonight I would imagine will be a big payday, but they've had to work hard for it. Sabu, of course, with that tough match, match against Will Furman in the first round. Van Damme meeting Kovac, they then refused to meet each other in the semi-finals, but it seems like they may we were just preparing themselves to take out Kovac and Herman now. That's just about all from the wrestling, I'm sure. However, I do know wait, what's going on here. I'll tell you what, Kenny, let's have a replay of the end of that match from a different camera angle. Oh, there's that chair shot. Vicious chair shot from Rob Van Damme. And there's the two coming off there. the top rope. A splash from Rob Van Damme, a leg drop from Sabu. They both go and make sure that Ulf Herman can't interfere. Michael Kovacs had no chance. He had no chance whatsoever. Now we've got a very special award ceremony. That's right, the Dirt Bike Kid is the new British Junior Heavyweight Champion and the new European Junior Heavyweight Champion. 
Still a dirt by Ken, not getting quite the, quite the reaction he might have hoped for. Their bike kid claims he's going to Japan and has a few nasty comments to say about Rob Van Dam. Well, he's certainly very happy with himself, as he should be. He should be proud of his accomplishments. He's beaten a top one star in Phil Powers and one of the world's greatest all round wrestlers in Mikey Whipwright. You heard him there thanking the fans for coming. I think he really does care. I think he's he's one of the few wrestlers in the world today that really cares about what the fans Let's get. Let's see if he's got any comments. This is mine, Sasuke. If you want this, you better come after me. Sabu, if you want this back, fuck you, you have to come with me as well. A few direct comments there from the third bike kid challenging the great Sasuke and Sabu. I just want to make an announcement to the great Sasuke. So you know why he's about to win of the tournament, featuring great athletes such as Sabu and Van Dam, as much as I hate that girl for the way. But Sasuke, if you want this girl back, the only way you're going to get it is to be part of the Japan, so I can beat your ass there. Otherwise, you can come here and be very good way you are, because I'm about to have a look at this. Sabu, you want this girl back? Did you? That's correct, the dirt bike kid gives a very direct challenge there to uh, both Sabu and the great Sasuke. So possibly we could be seeing matchups between these, between the dirt bike kid and these two, or possibly, who knows, will we see a three-way match down the line? That could be an option there. Of course, many people cite Sabu as Sasuke versus Sasuke as one of the dream bouts that has never occurred in recent years. Yes, Ross, who knows? Perhaps the EWA will be the first one to host that match. We just don't know at this stage. But that, certain, what we do know is that we have a new champion in the ring right now. And I think, without a doubt, more Ross, we can say that he deserves more, that Well, title. more important than anything, who want me... Well, everyone knows whose music this is. Yeah, Ross, here comes Sabu and Van Damme. We, we think to come and collect their awards for participating in the tournament. As I was but saying, the, the most important thing about the Dirt Bike Kid, in my opinion, having those two titles, is that he is a European and he is a Briton. We have a British champion, a truly British champion. Well, that's right, Ross. He lives and breathes the EWA, the Dirt Bike Kid. And uh, I think that he may not... He may not be as big a name as Mikey Whipwreck or Sabu or Rob Van Dam, but he's got just as much heart and, and just he'll put everything he's exactly, got into those times. Exactly. I think we've got a worthwhile competitor there and representative for our country, Kenny. That's right. And we see Sabu and Rob Van Dam seemingly a little hesitant to come to the ring. What are they discussing? Well, I just don't know, Ross. I can't let read. Claiming that these belts should belong to them, but it was the, it was both these guys that walked away from the titles. They had the opportunity to go on and rep. Well, Van Dam wants to have his music played as opposed to Sabu's music. Well, Sabu, keep up. We got what? We got two pieces for you, gentlemen. If you come to the ring. Ring announcer trying to persuade the grapplers to come to the ring. To thank you for your participation in this evening's event and also to show our esteem. Come on, Mohammed, come far out. Sabu speaking there, calling Mohammed. Hey, big time honor. I'm thrilled. Well, Kenny, I'm going to see if I can get some comments from the dirt bike kid. When are you going to be defending these belts then? Japan. As soon as Sasuke wants his ass beat, I'll come there and beat it. This proves I'm worthy now. I'm worthwhile in Japan. You want me? Better come.
Well, that was the EWA St. Valentine's Day Massacre. We're going to ask a few people what we think of the card. What do you think of the card? Uh, mainly good, but the last match was the best card of them all. You know, really? It's really best good. Best, best, best one, best one. Best one, best one. Sabu Van Dam Rule. Anyone else want to give a comment on the show? Hey, it was great. I'm coming from Sweden, see this, and I like it. Right, okay. Great. Will you be coming back to the next show? Yes. Of course. Okay. Any other comments from anyone else? What about yourself? Rules, man. Several rules. Okay. Good what about you? Rules. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyone else want to give their comments yeah. on the EWA St. Valentine's Day? That's all British wrestling rubbish, eh? <laughs> oh well, there you go. Okay. Some more people coming out. What do you think of the show? Bloody good. 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 Bloody. What do you think of the show? Great. Anyone else want to comment on the show? ECW. Nice. ECW. Anyone else comment on the show? The Edge. Brilliant. What do you think of the EWA then? Yeah, it's good. Will you be coming back to any Kick other show? Will you come to the next EWA show? WF or WCW. Anyone else, will you be coming to the next EWA show? Yeah, yeah. Any, any other uh, comments? Great event, great event. Came from the United States. Best ever. I've seen. Really? Thanks. Yeah. What do you think of the event this evening? Great night. See you next year. Oh, yeah. Bye. Bye. Well, as Ross tries to find out who that young lady was, I'm going to say his goodbyes for him. That's goodbye from Ross Gordon. Goodbye from me, Kenny McBride. We hope you've enjoyed the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Thanks for watching.